Hey everybody, welcome to Our Watch. I am Tim Thompson. Many of you saw the documentary film Out of Shadows. Um, the, the same creators of that has a new film. We're going to be discussing that here in just a moment. Before we get into that, just want to remind you to like and share this video out with your friends, your family, your neighbors. We want to make sure you get the truth. Uh, more importantly than that, I would ask you, go over to rwatch.com, subscribe there, and become a watchman. As you know, many of the social media platforms are censoring us or even trying to shut us down for giving you the truth, and we want to make sure that you always have a steady stream of truth into your life. Best way to do that, go to rwatch.com, subscribe there. We'd love to have you be partnering with us. That being said, we do want to welcome to our time together uh, the producer of that film, Out of Shadows, Mike. Mike Smith. Mike Smith is a former Hollywood stuntman stepping into the roles of characters like Batman and Spider-Man and um, and just to name a few. But additionally, he is a writer and producer and director. Mike Smith, welcome to our time together. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I actually wasn't Spider-Man. I was oh. uh, only been Batman and James Bond. Oh, so Batman I, and James Bond. Okay, my bad. Brad was, Brad was Spider-Man. Okay, <laughs> my, got it. All my, right. My, 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 well, we yeah, appreciate no. you being with us, and you know, you, you're releasing a new film, Into the Light. Before we get into that new film, just for my audience's sake, if they weren't familiar with your original film that we're talking about, Out of Shadows, this was a, a film that my wife and I sat down. We were glued to our computer watching this, and if you would talk a little bit about that before we get into your new film. Right. Uh, yeah. So, Out of Shadows was a was was a story kind of of my awakening, I guess, and the journey that I had to Christ. Um, you know, I worked in Hollywood at a very high level for many years, and and uh, I had a tragic accident in 2014. I was I was uh, hurt on set, and I was paralyzed. I was broken in half, and I was paralyzed from the waist down. And for the next three years, it was you know a lot of pain, a lot of uh, healing, a lot of recovery. And ultimately through that journey, uh, it led me on a walk of salvation. And I met um, a wonderful group of people on that walk. And as I realized, you know, and I said this in Out of Shadows, I said, I didn't find God like most people find God. I didn't, I didn't find God because I was going to church. I mean, I would go to church and I'd want to believe in God and I'd want to I'd want to believe, but I just never, it never happened like that for me. It wasn't like, I didn't have that moment that some people have, but, but when I had the moment and when God did rip the veil open and I felt the Holy spirit and the love and the light of Christ, I, I, it changed me forever. It changed, it changed everything about what I wanted to be as a man and what I wanted, you know, I'm, you know, obviously I'm still not perfect and, I'm still battle myself and the flesh and all that, but I'm, I'm talking about getting right and spiritually walking with the fundamentals of Christianity and, and living those principles in my life. And rather than, you know, than, than preaching it to people, I felt like the best way I could serve God was to, was to show, show them what show, show God's people or show my friends and family and, followers things that i believe to be true and uh that was how out of shadows started it, it it amalgamated into many different forms over it took it took almost three years to make that film and uh and you know and and that journey I, we i mean honestly when we made it we had i mean i was i would have been thankful if a hundred thousand people would have seen it but but God anointed it. God blessed it. It was the right time. And, and obviously when God wants something to go out, it goes out and it goes big. And, and, uh, and that message, you know, we, we were tracking the analytics for the first year and because it was on so many different aggregate sites, it had over a hundred million views when we were watching it and, and it got translated into 24 different languages. So, wow. Um, this next movie uh, though was we, I didn't I mean to be honest after out of shadows I, I felt like I was done I, I I know what I believe God's called me to do and I started working on that and I've, I've spent the last five years kind of working on what I believe is what I'm called to do and and but these movies for me are just a way for me to uh, give a perspective from an inside 
you know, perspective of an industry that not many people get access to, much less at the level that I was at. And I don't really know anybody, you know, there's a few that have, but most people don't want to give up that life to, 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 to do something like out of shadows or into the light, because you're giving up, a you're giving up something you worked on for 30 years. You're giving up, you know, a career. Most people couldn't have it if they tried. And, and I, I've just been very blessed and, and uh, lucky that I feel like God allowed me or showed me or gave me the ability to make these films. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I'm very humbled by that. And, and I'm humbled by the people that I've met along this journey because th there's a lot of people out there that are really brave that stand up and speak truth. And like, I mean, you're watching it right now. I mean, every, if you stand up and speak out, I mean, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, they, if it's against their kind of globalist agenda or their narrative, they crush you. I mean, right. you know, I, I don't know Russell Brand. I don't know Tim Ballard. But I know they're being targeted and they're being attacked. And what that does to me now is makes me really look at why. Why are they why are they going after these guys so hard? I mean, maybe they're good guys, maybe they're bad guys. I don't know. But I know when I see the media and all the mainstream outlets target individuals like Flynn or Trump or you know, you can name tons of people they target. It's uh, it makes me question that. It makes me look deeper into it. So, um, I guess after Out of Shadows, like I said, I felt like I was done, and then I kept praying about because people kept pressuring me to do other movies, and yeah. I, and I just didn't, I didn't have a Gary Lewis partner. Let's make a movie. Let's do. And yeah. I just, I my biggest thing was, well, that's fine. We can make movies. We can make products. But the problem is they own all the distribution hubs. They own all the outlets right. and gateways to the public. So until that problem is addressed, until that problem is solved, you're not you're not gonna solve the problem of getting the message out. So I set out like like I said five years ago to really take a look at how to fix that or how would you yeah. really restructure that. Right. And I believe that we're we're on to a solution and this movie that this movie is is really a test pilot for part of the solution that we are building. This this movie's being hosted on our own servers, on our own code, with our own payment processing. So that's why it's you know we price it very, very low to, to make it affordable. But we're, but what you're also doing is not only spreading this message of the movie, but you're help you're helping build something that we're going to plug this into in the future. Right, and so um, I, I'm I'm really excited about the reception of this movie, uh, the reactions to it. It's it's uh, it's been it's been fantastic actually. We're got a lot of exciting events coming up. We're we're going to be uh, screening at different places throughout the country, and and you know the best part is I'm getting to go out and actually interact with the people, and and meet people and, and hear their stories and talk to them. And it's, uh, it's, it's going to be, I don't know. I just, I just feel like it's all in God's timing. It's in his hands. Yeah. I'm just here as a messenger <laughs> to try to do what I can do. Yeah. Well, you're here as a messenger and the message that you're bringing is so important to the American people. It's important to the you know, citizens of the world. Um, like I said, there's, there may be, maybe some of my audience that didn't see the first one. And like I said, my wife and I were glued to our screen when we were watching it. And just, just for the sake of those who may not have seen the first one, what, what are the, the key things that they might pick up if they were to go back and watch that? Well, it, it, it highlights um, the psychological manipulation that's done in the media and through basically our, our lifetimes and how, and how these, uh, programs or these uh, tools are used to manipulate our thought processes and to manipulate uh, what we're what we're involved with. And then, out of the shadows, or out, it's out of shadows, not out of the shadows. I, I even do that. Um, it's out of shadows is about, and then it exposes kind of the gatekeepers in Hollywood, like the the you know like like I said this in the movie. 
not everybody in Hollywood is evil. Not everyone is bad. There are a lot of really, really good people that work there, that, that, that are just doing their jobs. But there are people that are at high levels that have influence over all those operations or over all those projects that really, um, that really have a, a, a direct influence on the messaging and the subconscious uh, narratives that are placed into the, the public psyche. And they, and they do this over year after year after year, well, it starts to shape and move uh, reality. And it starts to make things okay that once weren't okay, or makes things not so bad that used to be really faux pas, you know? So that's what, uh, and then, you know, the touchiest part of Out of Shadows was it touched into the human trafficking and some of the some of the satanic uh, occult things that, that, that that, that are that go on in the world and um i'm not well i'm not an expert at that i had access to people who were and as a filmmaker i i utilized those uh those stories to to present it to let people discern over the information and decide for themselves what they believe right you know one of the things that you brought up that that to me was just my mind was opened to something that, that it wasn't open to before. It was the the use of certain words like Hollywood, television, programs, channels, stuff like that, that I never thought of these things the way I do think of them now. Can can you allude to some of that? Yeah, of course. I mean, think about what's television. Television. And then what do you get? You get programming. <laughs> and even if you watch now, like I'm watching, like on some of the satellite stuff I watch, it says commercial break programming will continue yeah. like you're being programmed they're telling you you're being programmed and it's like when i woke up to that i was like it's right in front of you on my face and i can't see it like why can't i see this and it's you know and i think that's really what the second movie is so strong about is it really breaks down how psychological operations are set up and how they work and it explains to you why you can't see it i mean there's a scene in there and I won't give it away, but I'm talking with Lara Logan and I point out some things to her that I've, I've kind of connected the dots to. And I'm like, what do you do? You, and she, it didn't melt in her head. I mean, she was like, I never thought of it that way. You know, it's kind of the same thing. And until it's not that we're stupid. It's not that we're not smart. It's just that we don't have perspective. I mean, like, look at this. When I worked in Hollywood, right. I know how uh, a fake punch works. I know how, like, my job was to create action. So my job was to make you believe someone got shot, or my job was to make you believe someone fell out of a window or get hit by a car or get blown up. I mean, so my job was an, basically be an illusionist. Like, I would have to figure out how to find the right double that looked just enough like that actor, or, or you know, whether it's male or female, and maybe she's coming in and she's doing a fight scene. I had to make it all look real. So I understood how camera music and timing can be used to fool the mind into believing or staying in a story. And so like, as I moved up the ladder into writing where now you start to control the actual narrative of the story and actually what's out there and then directing, which is kind of a combination of, you know, the action world and then the, you know, the, the literal world, the, the narrative world combined with the performance of, you know, the fantastic actors you get access to and you can tell a story and people believe it. And that's where, I think that's where it was, it's so easy for me. Cause I look at actors completely different than, than the public does. Like I don't look at the actors as like, a big star. I look at them as a person who's become a big star. I see the person behind the mask. I see the person that you don't ever get to meet. I, I see their fears. I hear their fears. I, I deal with their insecurities or their, their concerns. So I guess, I guess what I'm saying is when you have a perspective from the inside of something, just like when you have a whistleblower come on here and talk about, 
COVID or the, uh, the medical system or the educational system. They have a perspective that your audience and I don't have. Like when you have someone come on here, like, like, like when I interviewed Liz Crooked about uh, the, the, you know, the Podesta emails and all the, all the things she was looking into. And then everyone labels it Pizzagate. Well, I really didn't like that term because this, what she was talking about and what I was looking into was so much bigger than that term, but that's the term that the media used to kind of vilify that. So I understood that's how they use the manipulation. But what, what I'm going to is like, if you're a lawyer, you understand the legal world. If you're a doctor, you understand the medical world. If you're a teacher, you understand the educational system. Firefighter, law enforcement, you understand your worlds. And Monday through Friday, you're in those worlds. Saturdays, you get to have a day off maybe if you're lucky, spend it with your family doing some fun stuff. Maybe Sunday you go to church and you start over Monday. You don't have time to sit back and absorb and analyze some of this stuff because you're in a constant case of, of what I call being on the hamster wheel. You have to go do your job, keep your living going, keep your family fed, keep your kids right. in school, what, whatever it is you're doing, you don't have the time to sit back and actually look at the world. And because I got paralyzed, and because I was in a bed for almost two and a half years, I had a lot of time to read. And I had a lot of time to ask questions. And I had a lot of time to look at things very different. So that's kind of where my motivation was like when I realized, and I I mean, when you're trying to explain something this big and how much we've been deceived to the population, it's very hard to not sound like you're out of your mind. Because when you start bringing up these things, it's very easily twisted. And, you know, I always try to keep a, a pretty even keel or a pretty down the middle stance on these things, but I know what's right. I know what's wrong. And, and I would say that probably the majority of this world would say that, you know, hurting a child or, or doing, you know, enslaving people or selling people or all these things that we know are happening that's evil. Okay. I don't, I mean, I don't know how you line it up, but to me, that's evil. That represents evil, loving a child, nurturing a child, caring for a child, seeing that child flourish. Those are good things, you know? So it's like you're either over here doing bad things or you're over here doing good things. And, and I just feel like as a Christian, and now that I really have become one, I want to represent what I feel God would want me to represent. And that's, you know, the Ten Commandments and, 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 and furthering the gospel of Christ and, and, and pushing for God's, God's Ten Commandments, the way to, for us to manage ourselves. I mean, fundamentally, living under Christian, you know, fundamentals. And because every time we go back to trying to do it ourselves, we fail. Right. We fail every time. So We've never been able to do Right. Well, you, your first film was so instrumental in waking so many people up. And, you know, you talk about, you know, becoming a Christian. I think this is one of the key things is you have the Holy Spirit in you, the spirit of truth. And you hear the things that you say in your, your first film, and it was so apparently clear, obviously clear to those of us that have the Holy Spirit that, yeah, we're, we are being programmed as a, as a culture. We're being, we're being Force fed certain certain things and trying to get you know, trying to get us to believe that certain things are good that are not good and we know according to God's word they're not good but um, this is this is something that's obviously happening and the Holy Spirit shows us that this is true and so your film was an eye opener for millions of people and now you've got the second film coming out the first film was free. but this next film that that's out now is is being you have a nominal fee for this I what what's the fee for it. I just we're just charging like for a three day rental. It's four ninety nine. It's the price of a cup of coffee. Nominal and you fee. Can watch, and you can watch as many times as you want, or you can purchase it for nine ninety nine, and you can watch as many times as you want. The biggest thing is, everyone that watches the film, the first thing they say is, "I want to watch that again." Yeah. Because there's a lot. I mean, it's an hour and seven minutes, but there's a lot of information layered in that film 
really explaining that if you dig into that film, you will see it. Um, I honestly think the second film is more powerful because it's so, there's nothing in it that's not true. It's not right, it's not left, it's got no stand. It's just, look, here are some facts. And these are the experts, General Flynn, Lara Logan, Brian Gamble, uh, Boone Cutler, and Dr. Keith Rose. These are the highest level military intelligence and intel people in the world explaining to you psychological operations. Because until you understand as a person how they manipulate you, why they manipulate you, and who's doing it, I don't think you're able to get to the truth about the real important topics like the border or or COVID or the election or J6 or human trafficking. There's so much because there's their side putting out their information they're pushing for. And then there's this side putting out its information that they're pushing for. And they're in the public's in the middle, like bouncing like little balls back and forth. Like, what do I believe? What do I believe? And that's where the Holy Spirit, that's where discernment, and that's where, you know, trusting your gut comes into play. And that's, and that to me is like, I pray over a lot of things. Like I prayed a lot before that movie. I, I didn't know what to do as a second movie. I, I mean, the only thing that I felt like God was saying was, Mike, you have experience in a world most people don't have experience in, and and you need to explain how they manipulate them. Because until they understand that, until you understand that your music, your social media, your your media, your journalism, your print, every everything is a tool, and and it can be used for good or evil. I say that in the film, but. If, if good people are pushing messages through that, we will have positive uh, messaging to the society. If if, if, a, if an evil or corrupt uh, entity takes control of that, then that's what gets pushed into the conscious mind of society. So so this is, like I said, it's a nominal fee, four ninety nine. They can rent it for three days. You said how much to, to buy it? Uh, it's nine ninety nine, and here's the cool thing: uh, we're rolling out here in the next few days. We're, you know, we're, we've had this pay it for where you could buy a code, purchase a code, and send a code to your friend. What we're going to add to that is we're going to start doing a code pool. So we're going to we're going to collect codes and send them to groups like Congress. We're going to send, you know, eat, and then we're we're setting up to do this. So what we want to do is when we get ready to set this campaign up, we're going to send ten pay it forward codes to every member of Congress. So they have, so they can watch this film, watch this, watch this information and see, and see, you know, cause most people say, Oh, it's pay it forward. Well, who are you paying it for it to? Right. I want to pay it forward and let the people know where we're paying it forward. We're sending it to this group. We're sending it to that right. group. We're going to send it to over here. And then that way people know, Oh, they're really, they really are engaging. They really are trying to make a difference. So, so yeah. So nominal fee, but, if somebody's involved in, first of all, if they watch the film, they're going to be enlightened to what's what's going on. They're going to get the truth, but they're also going to part, be part of something, right? So this money is going somewhere. What's this money doing? Well, the money, the, the actual money for the film is actually going to build what we're working on. It's And I, and I don't want to say too much about it, but I can say this. We're building a community-based educational platform. So that people, we, we, we're starting with homeschooling. We're going to start with, if you say have a zip, like you you punch in your zip code and in our under our homeschool page, it will give you your state, your region, your district, and all the curriculum and requirements so that you can have, you know, your truancy records tracked, all the things to be compliant to successfully homeschool a child in your area. And then what it'll also do is it's also going to tie into other members of the community that are in your area that you can get together with and 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 teach and help teach each other like say maybe there's five or six moms in one you know zip code that want to homeschool and they want to say hey i'll teach tuesday you teach wednesday i'll teach thursday and then we can all get together on friday or we can all just do our own thing it's up to you but but it's bringing the communities together it's getting people active it's 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 you know in the church it's getting people active in the schools it's it's bringing people a place to 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 start to congregate and to collect so that's what 
the ultimate goal of when we make the money back on this film, we're going, that money's going back into building what we're, what our bigger goal is. That That's really cool. I'm really glad that you guys are doing that. I'm glad you made the second film. How can people go and watch this film? It's really tough. You have to go to <laughs> into the light dot movie. Into the light dot movie there. They can, they can pay their, their four ninety nine to rent it for three days, nine ninety nine to buy it. They get their code. They can watch it with their friends and share it out to or, other or, people. They can get a code. They can buy a code and you can send that code. They just copy and paste the code. You can send it to your friends, family members, coworkers, colleagues, whoever you want. The problem is, is most people only have about three or four people that they want to send, you know, that they're close to, that they want to share the message with. So what we're encouraging people to do is to do that. And then when we have, when we launch these campaigns, help us push it towards all the groups so we can, so we can get the mess. The message to me is more important actually than the money. I wish I didn't have to charge for this, but unfortunately these films do take money and they do take time and you have to pay for them. So right. it's, you know, it's, it, this is life, whether I like it or not, that's the world it is. And, um, you know, look, I, I'm, I'm really encouraged about the future. I know things look really crazy right now, but I, I feel like, I feel like we're winning and I feel like people are waking up and I feel like we are, all coming together and being gathered as a remnant yeah. to, 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 to bring this message, uh, to, to everyone. And, and I think that, uh, this, I, I, my goal is I'd love to get this movie in every church in America, because I think, I think the message behind this movie really hits home to, we have to have God in our lives. Right. Absolutely. Well, again, so uh, they go to into the light dot, Movie. Correct. Correct. In the light right. movie. Okay. We will make and sure that we way, put that. And by the way, if you go to into the light dot movie, out of shadows is there too. And it's, it's still free. You can just go down on the bottom and watch it too. Well, I highly recommend all of my viewers to, to go and watch that the original one and then get the new one. So important. It's going to open your eyes. And uh, again, Mike, I'm just so glad that you did these movies, glad that you're doing what you're doing, glad that you know the Lord Jesus and that we have the fellowship and the unity that God tells us that we do have. So thank you for joining us today here on Our Watch. I thank you, Tim, and I, I really appreciate everything you're doing, man, and, and God bless you, brother. God bless you, and I just want to thank you all for joining us today. Again, into the light dot movie. Make sure you watch the original Out of the Shadows and get the new movie. So important. This is true. This is something that you need to share. It is something that people need to see. So God bless you. We'll see you next time right here on Our Watch with Tim Thompson.